Yeah, I mean, uh, it's just ridiculous. So you, you look at uh, you look at the, what's going on in the Middle East, North Africa right now. Uh, okay, uh, the president of Algeria brutally put down demonstrations in Algiers, but he's a good f friend of Sarkozy in, in France. He's a good friend of ours. We're not seeing no-fly zones established over Algeria, for example. Uh, we now have several Yemeni generals, many of whom were part of this regime in Yemen, corrupt as all get out now saying, oh, we're with the opposition. That looks to me like the CIA is trying to also co-opt uh, the Yemeni uh, revolution, just like they did the Libyan revolution. And uh, obviously they want uh, President Saleh gone, just like they wanted Gaddafi gone. This is an attempt by the CIA to basically take over uh, the revolutions where they see fit. And in places like Bahrain with those poor people, now uh, they're going into hospitals and shooting people who are being treated in hospitals in Bahrain, blowing up the the Pearl Square Monument because it was seen as a uh, sort of a rallying point for the opposition. But Bahrain is a, a host of U.S. naval base. Uh, uh, we don't see any no-fly zone being put over Bahrain. And where's the no-fly zone over Israel? So they they stop uh, attacking uh, defenseless Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank. We don't see any no-fly zone there. This is very selective. Uh, this is this is a typical neocon operation. Well, since the, when is a no-fly zone British special forces backing Al Qaeda rebels? Ah, well, it was just like Iraq and uh, under under Clinton, uh, no-fly zone over Iraq, and we had all kinds of uh, special forces going in, uh, penetrating the border through the Kurdish uh, no-fly zone area to get Saddam Hussein. This is the same uh, playbook being used all over again. What's the end game? We'll talk about that straight ahead. Why are they doing this? Then Fukushima. Then your calls. Wayne Metz. Hi, this Wayne, getting back to Tripoli and getting back to this new UN precedent where the UN gives an order and NATO and America jumps, obviously because it's their puppet they created to have this illusion of international solidarity, but it's the Security Council doing this, not outside nations, uh, you know, the 160 plus that aren't part of the Security Council, but having those 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 ground invasion ships, those amphibious d delivery systems off the coast with tens of thousands of troops, having Hillary say and Obama say, you will submit to us, you will allow an international aid force in, which means the military, or else, uh, they're basically gearing up for an invasion, a, a ground invasion. Do you disagree with that? Well, obviously, that if, there, if they've got these troop ships off the uh, coast with Marines, um, uh, that, that's a real contingency that they're considering. And, and uh, it, it seems like even Secretary of Defense Gates may have been overruled on this, believe that or not. I mean, he's a holdover from the Bush administration, but he was never too keen on this operation. Uh, I, I think he, of all people, know how uh, thin... U.S. forces are spread right now. We're in Afghanistan. We're in Iraq. We, we've got this covert war in Pakistan. We've been involved with Yemen uh, and now Libya. And I, I would also note that the very interesting uh, interview was given by General Wesley Clark. Now, I'm certainly no big fan of his, especially after what he did to Yugoslavia, former Yugoslavia. But he said that after 9-11, he met a colleague in the Pentagon who said, uh, listen, we're, we're going to invade Iraq. He said, what do you mean Iraq? What, 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 what's going on? He said, well, there's a plan that we're going to go into Iraq. We're going to go into Syria. We're going to go into Libya. And there was a couple other countries. And eventually we're going to go into Iran. So it seems like wh whoever this guy was who told uh, Clark this uh, was on the money also. And, and uh, we see Obama just carrying out this same plan that was hatched by the neocons under George W. Bush. You're absolutely on target again, Wayne, and under this new precedent, if people rebel, then the West invades, that's pointed right at Iran. Oh, I think Iran is, is and, and I think what's happening now in Bahrain, where you have a, lar a, a majority Shia population, you had the king of Bahrain now try to justify his bloody crackdown on the uh, opposition by saying, well, Iran was involved. Well, he didn't say, he said, uh, outside parties. Well, we know he's talking about. Uh, and they had the Saudi troops coming across the Causeway Bridge into uh, Bahrain. And, and, and just uh, there's videos of them just shooting people at point blank range, just like that, that infamous photo of that 
South Vietnamese uh, police off uh, uh, high-ranking officer shooting that uh, suspected Viet Cong in the head. We have videos coming out of Bahrain. Where's the no-fly zone over Bahrain? We don't hear Hillary Clinton talking about that or Barack Obama. Barack Obama was in Brazil as these, uh, this uh, military action was launched. Brazil voted against. Uh, well, they they basically uh, abstained um, in the Security Council on this on this resolution. All right, there, Wayne, they, they we got a break. Yep. Stay there. When we come back, we're going to start taking calls. But then later in the next 20 minutes, I'm going to bring up the biggest issue yet. They're saying Gaddafi's probably going to launch terror attacks. Will the globalists launch a false flag to legitimize the war? The Daily Mail is reporting Colonel Gaddafi's son killed in kamikaze pilot attack on Tripoli barracks. But we don't know if any of that's true because so much information is put out as war propaganda by the British, like Gaddafi racing to uh, Venezuela or running to Zimbabwe or being killed. Uh, we've heard it all, uh, but it is certainly intensifying. Also, the report talks about rebel fighters finding any Gaddafi supporters, tying their hands and killing them. But that's humanitarian and good. Wayne Madsen is our guest. We're going to get into the big issue after the break before we go to more calls dealing with uh, USI's terror response by Gaddafi. Perfect to legitimize the war. Perfect to have domestic crackdowns. Perfect to get approval ratings up. We'll talk to Wayne about that coming up. But right now, calls for Wayne Madsen, who joins us via video Skype from D.C. Mark in Oregon, you're on the air. Hello, Alex and Wayne. I um, would like to make a very short statement and then get your comments, if you would please give them. Uh, we're at a point now where it's not humanly possible to back this evil down. That's my firm opinion, and I believe that even more so because God himself has said, the God of creation has said, that without him we can do nothing. And do you believe that there's any way outside of relying upon God through a sincere repentance for our national... No, no Mark, I agree family. with you. We've got to change our hearts, and then God will lift us up as vessels to, to expose evil. That's why the globalists sell us on torture and corruption, because they know it makes us morally weak. I appreciate your call. Comments on that, Wayne Madsen? Well, I'll tell you, you know, can anything be done? Saturday, I was at an anti-war demonstration at Lafayette Park across from the White House, and this is what I saw in, uh, in the first time I saw all this in Washington, I know under Bush it happened in other uh, locations. Yeah, they arrested him for not having a permit. Was, they, they did, and they kettled, and the cops kettled everyone into a fenced-in area, and if you didn't get out of that area like I did, you were subject to arrest and a $500 fine. Now, Daniel Ellsberg was one of them. They, some people knew they were going to be arrested, but uh, they used the mounted uh, police, one well, the mounted horses, Kettled everyone into this fenced-in area, and 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 the, and the tourists and the uh, there was a couple of pro uh, anti Qaddafi protesters. All those people, nine there was nine eleven truth was there. Uh, all those people, uh, if they stayed in the uh, kettled-in area, they risked arrest. So everybody was forced to leave who didn't want to be arrested. I did not see that kind of activity under Bush, but I saw it under Obama. So, uh, in, 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 when it comes to exercising. Your 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 uh, uh, free speech rights, your uh, freedom of assembly, it does not apply at, at Lafayette Square, and it crossed my mind. Uh, it crossed my mind what what I don't think they want to have happen on Pennsylvania Avenue and Lafayette Park is a Tahrir Square, and this was a clear indication. If we ever tried to have a Tahrir Square in Washington, in front of the White House, it would be put down. You know, it would be put down uh, as fast as anything. Well, Wayne, and, uh, so. That, yeah. was, that was my next point, is that no protest zones. You can't protest in the park in, in land of the free home of the brave. But then Egypt allowed the protest to go on, and that was evil and horrible because they didn't hand the government over to the mob because <laughs> the West wanted it. I mean, th this is an illustration of the tyrants that run our country. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, I remember under Bush we had uh, probably been between 250 and 300,000 anti-war demonstrators at several of these... Wayne, i got to stop you. Your Skype is, is, is unintelligible. We're going to try to reconnect, or we may just go to phone with Wayne Madsen. It's great technology to be able to have him with us here on PrisonPlanet.tv and streaming to all the radio stations, but uh, we're going to fiddle with that during the break or maybe go audio only over his Skype, try to fix that breakup, and then we'll continue with Tim, Ben, JB, Ronnie... 
uh, and others that are patiently holding. We'll also get more on Wayne's take on the whole Fukushima unfolding cover-up. Now out of sight, out of mind. We've been uh, talking about all the different facets of the globalist destabilization program in the Middle East with investigative journalists, formerly with the National Security Agency, Wayne Madsen. And we're going to go to your phone calls here in a moment and segue uh, and get his take on the Fukushima unfolding crisis that's uh, worsening right now, uh, the press reports show. But it's, it's not the big news item now because uh, everybody loves a new war. It's so entertaining and makes a lot of men out there feel good about themselves uh, through the new world order that controls our country and that is bankrupting us. Uh, there's a lot of high-fiving. A lot of people are watching it at bars and they're not watching sports right now uh, they're very very excited and feeling powerful through this mass murder they're also celebrating and feeling very proud about photos of u.s kill teams with dead children that they pose with uh, this is our journey into evil very sick to see america turned into a instrument of the globalist uh, but this london telegraph article came out sunday we also wrote about it before they did i'm proud of that fact u.s government backs libyan al-qaeda while hyping terror attacks inside u.s and here's the London Telegraph, the West and Al-Qaeda on the same side. Uh, CNN also ran a similar headline. Uh, but uh, the big issue came out today, and they're certainly pushing this now, Wayne. U.S. eyes Gaddafi terror response. And if they have indeed killed one of his sons, as they killed his daughter decades ago, he might actually do something, which then allows them to, in the minds of people, how dare him fight back? That's terror. Uh, then launch a ground invasion. That's why they're so arrogant and, and, and full of bravado right now, in my view. And the White House memos talk about how great a terror attack would be to boost overall police state approval ratings for the TSA, who's on the ropes, the federal police state, the spy grid. I see it in the cards for them to stage a false flag or allow it to take place to try to bolster uh, their, uh, their, their expanded takeover. Wayne Madsen, your take on that? Well, I think it's it's hogwash. Uh, say, uh, uh, Gaddafi was linked uh, uh, to some terrorist groups, but we're talking about the 1980s, and of course, he was the, he was the uh, bad guy du jour in those days, um, um, linked to the Irish Republican Army and the Bas terrorists. But he he, he gave all these networks up uh, in r return for uh, having this. Uh, 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 new deal with these Western countries. So I think the, the idea that Gaddafi, who's basically got it enough to worry about inside Libya, could, uh, you know, uh, somehow call up these old uh, cells uh, from the 1980s and 70s is just ridiculous. It's more neocon propaganda. But what about the heard. issue of the neocon staging a terror attack as an excuse to ground invade and to crack down domestically? Well, I think that's always a fear from the neocons. I mean, that's that's how they operate. That's a, that's their modus operandi. We've seen it time and time again, and and so many of these false flag attacks. Uh, so the, the the mere thought that they're uh, saying, well, Gaddafi may uh, go the terrorist route, I think, is uh, trying to lay the groundwork for that uh, distinct possibility that we may see something happen in Europe or the United States. More more likely, it would happen in Europe, and more likely, it would happen in one of the countries that was not keen on getting involved in this uh, adventure and that, that would be Germany, Turkey and, and a few other NATO countries who, who just didn't want any part of this. Exactly. And folks, it's been declassified that our criminal government stages terror attacks on a routine basis. That is a fact. One of the chief ones, Gulf of Tonkin, to get us into Vietnam. Let's talk to Tim in Washington. No, no, Marshall in Texas is first. Marshall in Texas, you're on the air. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, I just want to bring up, uh, you spoke earlier on in the show when you spoke of Libya, uh, that they were going under the, under the guise of humanitarianism. This might set the precedent for them to do so here under unrest, whether it be the government creating the unrest and coming down on us, or whether it be just to set the precedent that they need to be the ones coming in so that this doesn't happen. Well, we saw what happened yesterday in Lafayette Park. Peaceful pro-war and anti-war protesters kettled and arrested in mass. No protest allowed in America. Uh, the very tyranny they're decrying in Libya. Wayne Madsen.